Botox is a neurotoxin that blocks nerve signals, paralyzes muscle, and, when the muscle relaxes, the skin appears smoother. As a result, wrinkles improve. Botox is extremely popular because it offers a non-surgical, quick, and effective solution for wrinkles. The procedure usually takes only 10 to 20 minutes. It also has a very high satisfaction rate. Over 95% of users report being happy with their results, according to the American Society for Dermatologic Surgery. Hold on. You just said Botox literally paralyzes muscles to smooth the skin. That's wild. Has anyone ever died or had serious health problems because of Botox? What's the worst case scenario? Botox, at cosmetic doses, is considered extremely safe when performed by a trained professional. Life-threatening complications are very rare, usually after very high doses or accidental intravascular injection. The toxin acts only within a few millimeters of the injection site, but in rare cases it can spread locally and cause eyelid drooping, ptosis, double vision, or trouble swallowing, effects that resolve within weeks to months. Overall, Botox has been FDA-approved for more than 20 years and maintains an excellent safety profile. That's reassuring about safety, but I'm curious, what happens with long-term use? Does regular Botox actually prevent new wrinkles from ever forming, rather than just smoothing existing lines? Yes. Studies show long-term effectiveness. A 13-year follow-up of identical twins, one treated with Botox two to three times per year, found the treated twin developed no permanent lines, whereas her sister did. Long-term Botox use can remodel the skin and make it less prone to new wrinkles. Okay, now this one's been on my mind the whole time. Could using Botox for years actually make your wrinkles worse when you stop? Like, does your face age faster if you suddenly quit after years of use? Current evidence does not support the idea that stopping Botox makes wrinkles worse. When treatment stops, muscles regain movement and wrinkles gradually return to their previous state, not worse. A study in archives of facial plastic surgery followed users for 5 to 10 years and found they still had fewer and less severe wrinkles than non-users even after they stopped. So you're telling me Botox doesn't make wrinkles worse after stopping? And long-term users may even have fewer wrinkles? Does Botox actually prevent new wrinkles if you start early, or is that just a beauty myth? It is not a myth. By reducing repetitive muscle motion, like frowning or squinting, Botox limits skin creasing and slows the formation of dynamic wrinkles. Starting earlier can therefore delay new wrinkle development. Okay, I get that it paralyzes muscles and that it's safe in small doses, but what happens if I keep using Botox for, say, 10 or 15 years straight? Will my face get used to it? Can you build up a resistance or tolerance over time? True resistance is rare. Only about 1-2% to of patients develop antibodies that reduce effectiveness. Modern Botox formulations contain fewer accessory proteins, which further lowers the chance of antibody formation. Most long-term users continue to respond well. You've mentioned side effects like eyelid drooping or bruising. But what if something goes really wrong? Can Botox be reversed? Unlike fillers, Botox cannot be dissolved with an enzyme. However, its effects are temporary, lasting three to four months, so unwanted results fade on their own. An experienced injector can sometimes rebalance asymmetry with small touch-up injections, and supportive measures such as neuromuscular therapy, facial massage, or prescribed eye drops can ease symptoms while you wait for the Botox to wear off. Ah, so it's more like a bad haircut. You can't undo it immediately, but it's not permanent. That makes it less scary. Will Botox make me look stiff or expressionless? How can I avoid that unnatural look? Properly dosed Botox targets only the muscles that crease the skin, leaving the rest of the face free to move. The frozen face look appears only when Botox is overused or placed at the wrong depth by an inexperienced injector. Choose a skilled professional who customizes the number of units and injection points for your facial anatomy. Over 95% of patients still smile, frown, and raise their eyebrows naturally, just with smoother skin. How long does it take for Botox to start working, and how long will the effects actually last? You will notice early softening in 3 to 5 days. The peak result appears around 10 to 14 days once the acetylcholine block fully relaxes the muscle. The smoothing effect lasts about 3 to 4 months before nerve endings re-sprout and movement returns. Does repeated paralysis actually thin or atrophy the underlying muscles, and if so, by how much? 
Yes, continuous inactivity leads to mild atrophy. Facial muscles can lose roughly 15% of thickness in one year of regular treatment. However, strength and bulk fully recover within three to six months after stopping, thanks to satellite cell activation and reinnovation. When is the best age to start baby Botox so you get maximum long term benefit without overtreatment? Most experts suggest beginning around age 30. Starting as early as 22 is often unnecessary, while starting after 35 may require higher doses to catch up. Early, light dosing helps keep dynamic lines from etching into permanent creases. How do I know if I'm personally a good candidate for Botox? What signs or facial features should I look for? You are a candidate if you see dynamic wrinkles, lines that show when you frown, squint, or raise your brows, and especially if those lines are visible at rest. Ideal patients are in good general health, not pregnant or breastfeeding, and free of neuromuscular disorders. What's the difference between Botox and dermal fillers, and how do I know which one I need? Botox relaxes muscles to smooth expression lines, best for the forehead, frown lines, and crow's feet. Dermal fillers at volume where fat or collagen is lost, ideal for nasolabial folds, sunken cheeks, under eye hollows, and lip enhancement. Many people use both in complementary areas. Okay, but what about those Botox creams I keep seeing online? Can I just apply something instead of injecting a neurotoxin into my face? Botox-like creams use peptides such as argyline that weakly inhibit nerve signaling in the upper skin layers. They do not reach the neuromuscular junction, so their effect is superficial and short-lived. Injectable Botox remains the only proven method to achieve true muscle relaxation and long-lasting wrinkle reduction.